Hi guys, it's me again. <laughs> God is so good to me. He allows me to do these audios. And hopefully you guys are sharing them so that together we are taking his word to every nook and cranny of planet Earth. So that's my heart's desire. <laughs> anyway, my plan is to read through all of the minor prophets listed in the Bible and all the chapters involved. We're going to get started with Hosea. This will be chapter one. And I've entitled this study, How Much Will I Pay for Welcoming God into My Life? My darlings, allow me to proclaim before all nations and before anyone hearing or reading this message that God is good always and in everything. Having shared that with all of you, I welcome you each again with all of my love and a grateful heart for deciding to listen to his word through these audios. It is always the intention and only focus that we each hear God's voice, delight in his love, and receive his wisdom through each chapter, in this case, starting with the book of Hosea. He is one of the minor prophets registered in the Bible. My perspective will be shared at the beginning, and then together we shall read God's written word. There, in his written word, is where we can all receive wisdom as our minds and hearts become spirit-led. Let's get started, shall we? The idea of welcoming God into our lives can sound simple. After all, to some it represents spending only two to three hours a week at a local church with people who, for the most part, are pleasantly cordial or even friendly. That seems simple, agree? If we only welcome God into a surface-only type of relationship, then it is simple. However, once we decide to welcome God deeper into our hearts, Life will, underline the will, become much more complex. The choices we make for ourselves and for our family members might host adversity. And at times we may even doubt our faith. We might forget the reasons that led us to obeying God, especially when it had a high cost for us and our family. When we allow his plan to develop in our lives and serve as testimony for others, circumstances will try us, but God has the sovereign power and authority to simultaneously lift us up in his victory. So we can have peace in adversity through God. Within the covenant, and here I'd like for you guys to underline and make your own notes and let it seep into your heart, that within, held within the covenant of our obedience and his grace, there inside abides freedom, peace, and spiritual satiety. When we live out, and I underlined live out, meaning putting into action, the Shema prayer, as is written in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5, but we'll read all the way through 8, and restated by Jesus in Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37, our lives will change. So then, if we're looking for our lives to change, let's find a pathway that brings us closer to obeying his voice. Using some of these questions that hopefully will help you, let's reflect upon them. How much of my lifestyle am I willing to adjust, alter, or even lose in order to obey God's voice and become more Christ-like? What price am I willing to pay so that my lifestyle exalts God and welcomes his perfect plan to develop? Am I willing to surrender my family to his will? When, or when they decide to welcome God deeper into their lives? The prophet Hosea chose to obey, and he also paid a high price. 
but are we willing to do so? Let's continue on and let me share with each of you these key takeaways that I've come up with. Number one, the Shema prayer reminds us to know who God is in our lives and to live out loud for him through our actions and ideas using all of our God-given feelings, thoughts, and might. We'll read that in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. And then we'll see how Jesus reinforced it in Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. Number two, on a daily basis, are we doing everything within our power to stay focused on God's voice? Are we yielding to his power and allowing Holy Spirit to be our guide as we love others through Christ-like behavior? Are we teaching our children? Number three, are we teaching our children and the next generation to publicly obey and keep this commandment before God? So it's my heart's desire that God reveals other reflective questions onto our hearts and that as we choose to lean closer to his willing voice, his wisdom guides, strengthens, and delights us as we marvel at living out his perfect plan. And why do I say his voice has will? Because it does. He has a purpose for speaking to each of us. It's not an accident. He just doesn't just talk to talk. He doesn't chit chat just to chit chat. There's a purpose and there's a will that he's trying to help us follow. And that's why I put it that way. So since he is a generous father and he will always help us meet the mark. Let's see what Hosea chapter 1 has for us to meditate upon. But remember, let's first look into how Deuteronomy and Matthew tie in to the level of obedience that we can have when we listen to God's voice and we choose to be present. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 8 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one, the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength, your entire being. These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be written on your heart and mind. You shall teach them diligently to your children, impressing God's precepts on their minds and penetrating their hearts with his truths. And shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, on your forearm, and they shall be used as bands, frontals, frontlets on your forehead. Amen. That pretty much sums up a 24-hour day, 365 days of the year. When you wake up, when you sleep, when you're walking, when you're sitting, on your forehead, on your arm, in your child's heart. I mean, it literally talks about our entire being. And then Jesus went ahead and reinforced it in Matthew twenty two thirty seven. He said, And Jesus replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So, amen. If we want to follow God's will, we can look at the Old Testament. If we want to follow and become more Christ-like, then we go to the New Testament. And all arrows point back to loving God, recognizing who he is in our lives, And doing everything within our power and might to share that with others and to do it ourselves. So let's get started with Hosea chapter 1. And see the level of obedience that he had. Hosea's wife and children. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea the son of Beeri in the days of Uzi, Jotham, Oz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to him, 
Go, take for yourself a wife of prostitution and have children of her prostitution. For the land commits great acts of prostitution by not following the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for yet in a little while I will avenge the blood that was shed in the valley of Jezreel and inflict the punishment for it on the house of Jehu. And I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of the military power of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Then Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to Hosea, Name her Lo Ruhamah, which means not shown mercy. For I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel that I would ever forgive them. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah and will rescue them by the Lord their God and will not rescue them by bow, sword, war, horses, or horsemen. Now, when Gomer had weaned Lo Ruhamah, she conceived and gave birth to a son. And the Lord said, Name him Lo Ami, meaning not my people, for you are not my people, and I am. Am not your God. Yet the number of the sons of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And in the place where it is said to them, You are not my people, it will be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. Then the sons of Judah and the sons of Israel shall be gathered together. And they will appoint for themselves one leader, and they will go up from the land. For great and glorious will be the day of Jezreel. Amen. So, these are my love nuggets from my heart to yours. How much of God have I welcomed into my life today? Should be an ongoing question for a lifestyle that is Christ-like in obedience. Meaning if we want to obey as Christ did his father, we it would behoove us to wake up and throughout the day ask ourselves, how much of God have I welcomed into my life today? Why? One might ask, why? Why should I ask myself that? To that I say that As his word is ever living, as should be the legacy of our lives. It should be ever welcoming of his power. Our lives should exist in an ongoing state of movement towards his will. When we recognize his authority over us, others will witness what it means to hear and obey his voice. They will recognize that he alone is Lord and that we strive to love him with every nook and cranny of our heart, that we welcome him into the depths of our soul and that we become mighty by doing so. Let us guide others to God by being a bit more like Hosea. Let us accept adversity and be ready to pay the price as we gladly, roll out a red carpet, and delight in his footsteps, making a perfect mark with his plan for us and our family to follow. What a beautiful thought that, to me, that was a beautiful thought because we know that the red carpet, it's you roll it out when you have somebody of significance. And if he's to leave foot marks, footprints on that red carpet, then we can follow in those footsteps and we can lead our family to follow and we can lead others to follow. That's the visual behind that anyway. So at this point, I'd like to invite you to receive the most beautiful gift that is yours for the taking, eternal life. If you are ready to do so, please say this prayer aloud. God, here I am, recognizing that I need you to guide me towards a new life. I recognize that I have sinned 
I repent truly and surrender to your will. From now on, I will do my best in allowing you to make changes within me. I proudly recognize publicly that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. And because of his sacrifice, your love, my repentance and belief, today and forever I am your child and can now live eternally in your kingdom. I ask that you gift all this to me in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. My darlings, I send you each all of my love. I may not know all the needs that I pray for, but God does. And Holy Spirit will intercede for us. Remember to share these videos and together we will complete the Great Commission as we take his word to all the nations. Bye-bye.